Testing sound, testing sound, one, two, three. Good evening, race fans. We are here tonight for the International Racing League Season 2 Round 4. This is the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, my name is Webbo here, obviously host of the channel. We will get underway uh, and I'll talk you through championship standings very shortly, but we're going to go straight into one-shot qualifying before the sprint race. So we will do our talking on the racetrack as we get underway for this uh, for this particular one-shot qualifying it's always a tricky one for from a commentator's point of view to try and uh, track the fastest driver at any given time of course the drivers will have to remember to get all their setups on get everything straight and sorted and ready to go and dive straight into one shot qualifying uh, we come off the back of three consecutive different winners from the first three races of this second season and race three's winner director ollie who took it all the way to the wire, being chased by Adam Foran. Dx Riley will not make an appearance tonight. Instead, we welcome back to the race. We welcome back Adam K, winner of race one. So it should be all to play for today. Uh, a lot of uh, attendance issues for our drivers, causing uh, causing a rotating cast of characters. But we have a really strong field for you tonight. So let's get on track. Let's get trying to track what the drivers are up to. Uh, throughout the course of this uh, qualifying session. <laughs> oh, Tia, me, and it's Spa, and it is throwing it down. This <laughs> is going to be absolutely treacherous conditions for the drivers. From a neutral's perspective, this is great. For the driver's perspective, man alive, they're going to hate this. Good evening to AJ, who joins us, who you'll see on screen as ARL, um, and is usually first out of the pits in his qualifying. Uh, this won't uh, affect that, of course. He'll be straight out onto the track like everybody else. Um, we're just waiting for everybody to make sure that they've got those setup choices together. I will try and take you through the championship standings, but I know that Sod's Law says that the minute I start reading the championship standings, we'll go straight into qualifying. Good evening to Jessica. Nice, for you, nice of you to join us uh, right from the very beginning tonight. We've got a 30-second countdown for one-shot quali qualifying. Jessica cheering on Floydy, of course, um, and uh, the man of n many names is uh, Floyd Pink. Uh, but we will stick with what he has on the uh, screen as AJ is just recovering from the shock of uh, looking at this one for, uh, for the conditions. This, this has to be full wet uh, for 
uh, for the uh, qualifying one-shot quali um, approach. Let's go racing, shall we? Let's go qualifying. Uh, and uh, we will do our best to try and uh, give you an update. Look, we're riding with Marco at the moment through into uh, La Source Hairpin. That's not going to be quick at all. So let's uh, try, and try and find a driver who is doing OK. We'll go on to Adam Foran, who looks to be fastest. Our session host, Speedy Spud, unfortunately, has managed to crash through La Source. They'll be very tentative through here as ARL is immediately gripping in up the hill through Radion and uh, down the Kemmel straight. Then Jay has retired going through Eau Rouge and Radion as well. There's two down, uh, 14 remain as we head straight into Lake Com Chicane. And then, of course, Malmadi Corner just... Uh, taking this very steadily you can see full wets on the car ARL is struggling so it's back to Adam Foran at the front in the McLaren and he, he is tackling Adam K Strike Moist is uh, tentatively while well, he was hot into the Rivage corner as we go through Jackie X corner next and it looks like it's going to be between the Adams and Moist uh, at the front of this field as Moist is uh, living up to his name here Moist by name Moist very much by nature and it comes through the Puan double left as we head down towards Lefania in the uh, right and then left fast chicane of Lefania. Uh, difficult to plot your course through here if the raindrops are running down your screen as they are for me here as the spectator. So a little bit of uh, counter steering perhaps through the two Stavlo corners and then powering out. We'll, we'll have a listen to see if they continue to go flat through the Blanchimont corner and even the approach to Blanchimont. Atsu's retired. How's that for courage from uh, Moist who managed to go flat out? It's late breaking into the bus stop chicane for the, to finish this lap out. At the moment, he is seeming to be the master of these moist conditions. And he stretches to the line. We will see the, all the leaders uh, of, the, uh, of the championship so far are all in the top group. Fantastic stuff. It's Moist Alpha Alex, winner of race two. It's Leon in P3. Adam K in P4, winner of race one. Adam Foran, runner-up in the previous race in fifth. Fantastic to see, as I say, our race one champion, uh, our season one champion, Moist, uh, puts it on pole position uh, for this sprint qualifying sprint race. And AJ says he had a Baku uh, 2019 Leclerc moment. In other words, I am stupid. Well, then, all oh, wet tyres. We got 11 finishes of that qualifying. We got Moist on top from Alpha Alex, from Leon and Adam K. And then Adam F, Adam Foran uh, in fifth position. You've got Ash in sixth, Ricky Maru in seventh. Then comes Captain Nike. The two Scots of Marco and Floyd Pink in ninth and tenth, sharing that fifth row. Then comes Sticky. Uh, and then the non-qualifiers that got the furthest. Atsu down to the least. Chuck Norris, Jays and Speedy Spurred with ARL disqualified from qualifying and we'll have to start this sprint race from the very back but plaudits go out to the top group here who kept their head and moist scalp was 1.2 seconds let's hope that the uh, the sprint race conditions are a little bit fairer for everybody uh, looks like um we're being asked about whether part Ferme is on uh, from jay so he didn't manage to get the most out of his setup or didn't get his setup attached in time. I'm hoping we don't go straight into um, the next session, but it looks like the host has left the session. We're having a, a problem here. So it looks like we will go to a restarted session. I will wait for my uh, invitation to come in and hopefully then the drivers will be able to um, reorganize the sprint. Um, so I will stay on here, stay in game, otherwise I will lose the stream if I quit out of the game. So I'll wait for my new, um, my new invitation. Um, and I'll just check in with the drivers whether uh, we will be straight uh, custom grid and straight into the sprint. <laughs> Give me a second. So that was very, very wet conditions, of course. A couple of drivers crashing at the very start. Um, and I will do my best to try and get um, get information for you. While we're waiting, though, let me talk you through the championship standings because the uh, Spud will have to restart the, uh, the, the, the lobby to get us underway. So I talked to you about the previous race winners. Let's look at the drivers' championship, shall we? 
Uh, looks like I've got my invitation. That was very speedy work from Mr. Spud. Let's go get ourselves uh, get ourselves that particular uh, invitation. This is what it, how it works. But this is the uh, driver standings after Jeddah. Um, we find we have Adam Foran on 45 points, leading Moist, season one champion, by three points on 42. Next comes Director Ollie on 39. Uh, Adam K on 25. So is Alpha Alex with a win each, but no further points from the first few races. Then we go into Ricky Maru, who has 20. Uh, Jay has 18. And then comes Leon and ARL. Both on 15, joint 8th position. Floyd Pink is 10th uh, for Ferrari on 14 points, but so is Sticky for Alpha Tauri. Then comes Marco, down to 8 points. Uh, joint in 13th is Trappy and Triple Bay. In 15th, we have Atsu on 5 points. Joint 16th is Speedy Spud, Captain Nike and Malmo with 2 points each. And with a single point is Chuck Norris. But as we know... Chuck Norris doesn't need points. Next up, then, the Constructors' Championship after round three. McLaren lead with 60, Aston Martin 48, and Williams on 47. Just that one point behind. Little gap then down to fourth position with Scuderia Alpha Tauri on 31, closely followed by Alpine on 30, Red Bull on 27. Then we have Alfa Romeo on 20, Mercedes on 19, Ferrari on 16, and last but not least, the Haas F1 team on six points. As I say, I will try and get you an update as to what the plan is or whether we go straight back into um, into racing. So, da, 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 da. okay, we're just talking about the weather. We're looking like sprint is, is mostly supposed to be wet. Race was supposed to be dry. Uh, but I don't know what's happening about the, uh, whether we go into qualifying or not, let me, let me uh, try and find out for myself. That would be uh, that would be sensible, wouldn't it? Da, da, da. Here we go. And qualifying. Are we going to restart one shot? That would be a somewhat unfair to those that survived. Uh, it is changing as we speak. There we go. It's off. So uh, looks like we're going to go to custom grid. Fantastic. Okay. So we haven't wasted any time. Um, other than the uh, the closure of the lobby, but we'll be uh, back with you shortly. So uh, this time to go grab a snack if you need to, and uh, make sure you've got the popcorn. Make sure you, make sure you got get, get yourself well hydrated, and get strapped in for race four of the championship. And comms will return uh, after a short break.
Okay, folks, we're back then, and we're going to be uh, watching the sprint race immediately uh, after the formation lap, of course. Ten seconds to go before we hit the paddock, and we check out to see whether the cars are ready on grid or not. Uh, looks like, of course, Moist will take them away from pole position, uh, and uh, we are expecting to see... Well, the drivers were expecting to see a uh, damp or wet sprint race into a dry full race, but... Uh, I did see that the weather is on dynamic so and realistic, so that could mean anything at Spa. You could have amazing, uh, amazing sunshine or torrential rain with rivers running across the racetrack. So I look forward to the atmospheric conditions at very least. Um, just a reminder that as the as the spectator view of the uh, of the coverage, we don't see all of the spray that we would hope to, or, or in fact that the drivers see at their level. So um, it is usually wetter for the drivers and harder to see than it is for us here watching. We did okay during the full wet qualifying, uh, but I know that uh, trackside cameras don't tend to quite show the full story. Um, it's been a while, though, for me um, to, to commentate a wet race, so maybe things have changed a little bit for the better, but it's certainly not up there when, in, in terms of uh, um, your iRacing or even your Gran Turismo 7 in terms of how the game uh, renders the rain and how it looks in all those conditions. But it does look dry right now uh, on the uh, as the cars are on the grid, so unless we see something drastic changing during the f formation lap, hopefully we'll be on our way. There were reminders for the drivers, as usual. Uh, AJ saying rain for the last three cycles. Are you are you meaning for the last three cycles of the of the main race or for the sprint? Is that just an update for us for sprint conditions? I'd love that a little bit of clarity. But thank you for dropping a note, uh, an indication there from AJ or ARL that uh, he is um, going to be um, he's going to be listening to me commentate. So I best not give anything away. And he says it's for the sprint race, so we should have some uh, some wet conditions for the sprint much obliged to you aj uh, fantastic to get that insight from the paddock he's actually co-commentated with me before but not from the uh, driver's seat uh no uh, that would just be silly the most of the drivers i will remind you are in a driver chat room so that race control can issue instructions uh during this <laughs> he says he's always listening oh better be very careful what i say then about about arl's performance <laughs> <laughs> so the drivers get ready. There are no um, no uh, protests yet from Greenpeace, um, but we are possibly expecting some in uh, in Spa this year, uh, given the main title sponsor of the race. We shall see if anything unfolds during the coverage. I doubt it. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's hang and hold on to our hats. Then make sure your uh, coveralls and your waterproof clothing is not too far away because it looks like we're going to be uh, getting a little bit damp out there tonight uh, in the sprint race because we've got long shadows uh, in the uh, on the paddock and it looks like it might be an early morning sprint possibly uh, <laughs> from rain delays the day before <laughs> um, but uh, absolutely looking forward to this one so let me have your predictions while we wait. Your predictions for the sprint podium. Uh, remember, Moist is uh, was a lot quicker in qualifying, but that was one shot in the full wet conditions. So will that still translate? Has Moist had to redouble his efforts after dominating season one? He finds himself arriving at season four, this this uh, race four of this second season, without a win to his name yet. So he's hoping to make it four winners from four races so far. Uh, will the wait continue, though? He's not doing badly in the championship. He's second in the championship, of course, uh, with consistent, strong performances, despite some really big problems that he's had in the races. Great to see Jessica, who's uh, picking Floyd, Leon and Moist. I think heart is rolling head, perhaps, for Jessica in the sprint there to see Floyd on top. But uh, I think maybe uh, getting into trouble if she didn't pick Floyd um, as, the, uh, as the sprint winner. Uh, but in, uh, in the Ferrari... Uh, I don't think he was uh, anywhere particularly high up. It's been quite a while, though, since I read those results. So uh, I can't remember it brilliantly. But I don't remember Ferrari being very high up in the in the order. Uh, waiting for the uh, formation to begin. Here we go. So let's check out the tyre situation for everybody. 
uh, and what they've chosen. Well, it's going to be medium tyres with no mandatory change uh, during our eight-lap sprint. Of course, very, very few laps while we're racing in Spa. Chance of safety car, pretty strong, you have to say. Cars going through the Eau Rouge and Radion, and without the, uh, the danger element of, uh, of physical harm, uh, unless you've got a direct drive wheel turned up to 120% and you hit the wall. Um, drivers do tend to be a lot more um, adventurous through the corners of uh, Brazil than perhaps they do if, uh, if their physical health is at stake. Speedy Spud, remember, had that uh, issue through into La Source and uh, ARL was disqualified from qualifying session. Then we go from the back moving forward the two mercedes are together with j 2020 just uh, losing out to chuck norris who uh, as, as i said earlier on has a single solitary world championship point so far atsu in the alpine is 12th with sticky in the alpha tauri in 11th floyd pink then looking to try and impress uh, jessica at least and get up onto first position from 10th in the sprint race in eight laps will be a big big ask on everyone on the same uh, strategy here then we've got marco in ninth position floyd's teammate captain nike who does all of our uh, flying logistics on flight simulator um, has uh, managed to qualify in eighth with, with uh, not too much in the way of fatigue, just the small hop from uh, the UK base of operations for the main logistics of the uh, of the paddock over to Belgium. Then comes Ricky Maru. Well, I think DHL may have driven that uh, that uh, that journey. Ricky Maru in the Alfa Romeo is seventh with Ash K uh, looking to try and lift Haas off the bottom of the World Championship standings at the moment. Then comes Adam Foran, one of our race winners this uh, season so far. Sorry, that's incorrect. Second last week, I should, should say, but pushed uh, the actor Ollie all the way. And Adam Foran will be a, a strong pick potentially for a good result coming off the back of a second place last week without the winner present tonight. Adam Kay won the race one of the season and he is in fourth position for Red Bull. Leon. Showed very well in the first race of the season as well. And um, we shall, uh, certainly in Silverstone, I do remember. Then comes Alpha Alex, race two, Silverstone winner. Um, didn't win on the road, but won after penalties. And as I say, season one dominating champion, Moist, in first position, in pole position for this sprint race. And he's going to hope that no one goes bowling into La Source here. Uh, on the uh, first run down little last few adjustments for the drivers last few burnouts before they get ready for their uh, grid markings and try and find their position on the grid engines starting to overheat at the front of the grid they'll be anxious that all 16 drivers get into their positions as quickly as humanly possible I'm hoping that we can get ourselves a decent camera angle because it has been pretty awful uh, so far. Well, this is a very long, drawn-out camera angle, but the best one I can get at the moment. The revs are building, the lights are on. It's almost time to go racing for round four, and it's lights out and go, go, go. And there goes Moist straight into the lead as the Alpine of Alpha Alex is positioning himself to try and move up the inside. It looks like Strike, Strike Moist has got a good run coming out of last source here, but he will be vulnerable. The cars are close enough, and will we go too wide into into Eau Rouge? Not this time for the, that group of drivers for the Haas and the uh, McLaren of Adam Kate. And running down there, it did look like Alpha Alex perhaps didn't have the best run out of uh, Radion. He's uh, fighting off Leon, and Moist for now is uh, is is able and safe to stay in that first position. Adam K has moved up. Alpha Alex has dropped down into fourth position through the first chicane. <laughs> Jessica's picking Nike now for a second. So Floyd and Nike. Okay. That was a, that was good. Floyd has gained up the one, one of those positions he needs. And so ARL is climbing up the order as well. He's into 12th position with, with a brave and strong uh, journey up the order into 12th let's hope it's not too adventurous and finds himself uh, overreaching perhaps but let's have a look at him uh, as we go past through the ferraris uh, arl with a good climb into 12th position remember he was disqualified and started at the very back of this sprint qualifying here is ricky maru then fighting with 
uh, Ash K, Ricky Maru into sixth position. Strike holds the lead, but not by much. Leon is right on his tail here. Remember, identical tyres, identical fuel strategies for the drivers, and this will all be about the car setup and who is leaning in their setup into the rain conditions, both for qualifying that we had and for this sprint race, but uh, no way through for Leon into the bus stop for the first time of asking. And it is moist in the lead. We've got a uh, yellow flag, a yellow flag in sector three. Let's try and have a look and organize our, our race uh, race map there. Everyone has managed to make it out of, uh, of that position. So as we head down to Eau Rouge again, we'll join Leon on board and see what the slipstream does for him. Looked like he had, was pretty well committed through there. He's got a great overspeed. Will the car and wings store when he gets to the inside as they head down to Lee Com for the second time? Here comes Leon into the lead. And Moist had to give that one up for fear of losing a second place and going down to, to third position. Looks like uh, Floyd Pink is in eighth. ARL is in ninth. Sticky holding off Floyd Pink for the time being. But they go side by side through Malmadi. Do they? Yes, they do. And just about make it as they head downhill into the tricky hairpin. Uh, profile of Rivage Corner and it's Floyd is up into seventh. ARL is uh, challenging Sticky's eighth position at the moment, but right at the front it is uh, McLaren leading Aston Martin. We've got Leon from Moist and Moist very strong in this middle sector, so that indicates to me that he's showing a high downforce setup here because Leon drove past him. Uh, using both slipstream and no DRS. So it looks like the Aston Martin might be being kinder to its tyres, uh, but ultimately going to struggle on outright pace down the two main straights and the two main overtaking opportunities. They go through Blanchimont, though, and he's very quick into here. Fakes to the inside, but uh, Leon stays on the racing line. Have we got any other moves going on into the bus stop here down into the, the end of lap two? Not quite. ARL in the Haas. Uh, but he's a reserve driver, so I don't think he is contributing to the Haas point allocation. There is Captain Nike in uh, in 16th position. He's dropped down uh, and making a little bit of a mockery of Jessica's predictions so far anyway. DRS has been enabled. It's the start of lap three. Here then is uh, is the, the, the onboard view of Stroke Moist. You heard the beep. That means he's got the DRS open. Should be nice and easy to go through. Will the Red Bull fight, will follow him into second position? You bet your bottom dollar he will. Oh, we've got contact. We've got contact at the corner. I think the Alpine and the rearmost Red Bull uh, McLaren had contact before the two McLarens had contact through that corner. Uh, it looked like uh, Adam Foran was slightly slow. Leon tagged him from the rear in the middle of having his own problem with one of the Alpines, which must have been Alpha Alex. Has Alpha Alex been able to... Uh, uh, get away with that without any major damage before and pending any steward inquiries steward inquiries through the um, through the sprint race will not be uh, able to have any impact on the main race of course they will be able to have an impact on the uh, on the points awarded for the sprint race and we have a retirement we have captain nike who has retired in the pits thankfully for the rest of our races and here is ricky maru then chasing down race two winner alpha alex as uh, this is looking like a very, very good uh, position for Ricky Maru at the moment. Remember, identical strategies. This is all about uh, how you manage the tyres over the course of the eight laps of the sprint race. Big lift and coast there from Ricky Maru, saving a bit of uh, fuel for later, I think. Didn't fancy the move into the bus stop. Let's head up to the uh, sharp end, shall we? Because Moist is ahead of Adam K. They no longer have Leon in the mix uh, just yet. Leon and Adam Foran down to fifth and sixth position. So we'll ride, shall we, with Adam K and see if he can avoid any outwash of the rear from the Aston Martin. He's quite a way back here, but this should still be possible. There you can see it's, inc it's so much slower to be the driver without the DRS. And Moist had to give that one up that time. Adam K now into the lead, our third leader in four laps. Uh, it's been a fantastic run so far. Ricky Maru didn't find his way through as we head on into the uh, second sector with the majority of the cars. That was Adam Foran running wide. ARL pouncing into Rivage Corner. Beautifully done. I think there was a touch between them, but it was at slow speed and just side profile to either side pod or 
or uh, tyre wall. Uh, and uh, Sticky makes his way through. It looks like Adam Foran did suffer some damage through that. And in fact, he's actually <laughs> not just some damage, a whole host of damage. <laughs> it's going to make him very quick in sectors three and one. But this sector is going to be like driving... Uh, I don't know, a boat through here. It's just not going to turn into the corners. The rear of the car will turn before the front, really, at uh, full racing speed. So uh, Adam Foran will presumably have to pit here as Moist has closed in once again. Now we'll be able to see whether Moist has got the top speed with the DRS to make an overtake, uh, despite what I suspect to be a higher downforce setup. He probably won't go for it into La Source, that's where you'll see third or fourth cars in DRS trains go for it potentially so they don't lose the DRS on the way through. Adam Foran is into the pits. We'll ride through. Eau Rouge. Staying in seventh gear, actually. If uh, the uh, game is to be believed, my view of his uh, cockpit is to be believed. Stayed in seventh gear and uh, he's managed to make it through. Enabled to get to the braking zone by the time they get there onto the racing line as well so Moist back into the lead that was four changes for the lead if you're counting by the start the first sector of lap five and Alpha Alex and Ricky Maru follow behind but some three and a half seconds separated let's have a look down the order then and see if Floyd Pink is going for any moves well one of the halves in front of him of Ash K was running wide uh, going through Malmady Malmady always makes the cars understeer there's a nasty bit of uh, outwashing camber pushes the cars off the circuit effectively that way and here then is Floyd Pink uh, four tenths of a second away as Atsu has picked up a three second penalty let's check out the penalty situation now as we're into the second half of our sprint uh, quali uh, sprint qualifying sprint race I don't quite know what you want to call it quite frankly Jay's down in 15th position at the moment but the order on lap five is strike moist ahead by four tenths of a second of Adam K but that is reducing as they head down towards the bus stop here Alpha Alex is in third with Ricky Maru super close behind as well then comes Leon a further three seconds behind those two and uh, ARL with sticky Ash K picking up the final sprint points uh, so far at least as we start lap six it looks like Adam K having a tricky run heading through La Source that time. I don't know if he'll be able to catch. He'll have the DRS. He's certainly within a second, but he doesn't have the best opportunity here, potentially. We get the DRS open. There it is. And the gap drops down, but, but it's too late, too little and too late before they get to Lake Com. Looks like Alpha Alex is trimmed right down to nothing in terms of downforce because he's able to hold off Ricky Maru, who doesn't even look like he's got DRS, uh, thanks to Alpha Alex just driving with very little downforce at all, just under-rotating that front right as he leans on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the car to get through the corner. Jay picks up a new fastest lap this time. I wonder if uh, Adam Foran has pitted and put on different tyres. Yeah, we've got uh, soft tyres for... No. He's put on fresh mediums. Does that cost him in the main tyre allocation for the Grand Prix, I wonder? Uh, that's a question. Adam K seems to not be able to live at the moment with the pace of Strike Moist. The gap has opened out just outside of the DRS zone. One second deficit. Meanwhile, Ricky Maru is uh, as close as I've seen him to the back of Alpha Alex. No DRS down this straight, though. He'll just hope to try and uh, close that distance as much as possible, taking a slightly different line as Alpha Alex just runs onto what I can only imagine to still be slightly damp grass. So, close but not too close as they go through the bus stop. Ricky Maru needs a good exit here and to just stay with Alpha Alex, who can't afford to, to play any games on the DRS detection zone. This really has to be everything as Retro sh shows up and uh, is pleased to see Moist on top. Here he comes then. This is looking like a really promising run for Ricky Maru into Eau Rouge now over the hill of Radion. Car getting very light, but he's kept the uh, gentle steering inputs, DRS, beep and open, but he needed that slipstream behind Alpha Alex. Is this a late dive down to the inside? No, just a lift. And that is just uh, taking our time there with Ricky Maru. To, uh, to make the overtake. 
and he's not going for it just yet. Chuck Norris might uh, might be looking at something. He's got DRS, has he? No, he hasn't. He didn't pick it up, but he managed to get under a second by the time they reached the end of the Kemmel straight. Further down then, we've got Floyd Pink in ninth after Ash K, then Chuck Norris on screen, both of those two. Then we go back to Atsu, some 12 seconds back. All the rest of these drivers have had some problems in this sprint race. Adam Foran in 12th place. He would be hoping for much better out of this race than 12th. Uh, as he was right in the lead group. Speedy Spud is in 13th with Marco down in 14th in the Williams. Jay is in 15th and Captain Knight will start the main race from 16th position. Uh, but uh, it's uh, certainly going to be a challenge for Captain Knight out there tonight. Riding on board with Ricky Maru once again. He takes a wider line in the approach to Blanchimont than does Alpha Alex who is wanting to hook that inside line and dissuade any moves into the bus stop. Ricky Maru is playing this very cool and he's not scrubbing the tyres. He's not using too much fuel. He is uh, just staying close enough to Alpha Alex to make him nervous, keep him guessing and possibly wait for Alpha Alex to possibly ignore the fact that Ricky Maru is behind him and, uh, and be there when it matters at the end of this next straight. Uh, we've started the final lap of the sprint. You can see the gains that Ricky Maru makes. Now stay in the slipstream this time, Ricky. As he gets the DRS, he draws alongside. He's on the outside line, so the Alpine can afford to break later. Can they both make it into the corner? Ricky Maru through and into the uh, provisional podium here. And he's had some good speed. I imagine he's got a bit of fuel left as well, and potentially even some ERS deployment for the rest of this final lap. That was well done from Ricky Maru. Alpha Alex deposed down to fourth, but still a decent haul of points out of the uh, out of the sprint race and surviving lap one and two of the Belgian Grand Prix sprint was uh, important to make sure that you uh, double down and, make, uh, and ensure you a good starting position for the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, though, we've also got Strike Moist uh, out there and uh, he is leading this one. He'll take away maximum points with just a few corners left to go. Uh, looks like Adam Foran moving up into 11th in the background. But uh, here is Moist out of Blanchimont. Used all the battery. Uh, down into the bus stop for the final time of the sprint. And your sprint race winner from round four of the championship goes by way of season one champion Moist. And a fist in the air from him. Adam K will take home good points, but he put up a fight, but he just couldn't live with the end of the sprint uh, pace there from Moist. Ricky Maroon third, Alfrax in fourth, Leon in fifth with a rescued race. ARL from the very back to sixth. That will almost guarantee him driver of the race. Sticky in seventh, Ash K in eighth for Haas. That's a double points uh, haul for the... Uh, Losing team in the championship at the moment. Floyd Brink in ninth, Chuck Norris in tenth, Adam Foran uh, had a pit stop and still finished eleventh. With Atsu also pitted. So did Speedy Spud. It looks like putting the uh, soft tyres on in thirteenth. And we go down to see Marco and Jay finish the race. Captain Nike did not finish, but we'll get to start the main Grand Prix shortly. Here is Marco crossing the line. We'll have Jay shortly behind, but it is Moist in the. Aston Martin who wins the sprint race and will start from pole position. There we have ARL with the biggest climb from the very rear of the grid and he only needs to do that again to win the main race doesn't he <laughs> he's up against uh, someone uh, some slightly faster drivers though at the top of the order strike moist wins and takes home eight points from adam k's red bull then comes ricky maru uh, in uh, in p3 in the alfa romeo alfa alex in fourth position and look to him to have a good race in the main Grand Prix. Leon in fifth will be looking for revenge and a better result. Then comes ARL in sixth. Sticky and Ash K pick up the final points. Then comes Floyd Pink in ninth. Chuck Norris, Adam Foran, Atsu, Speedy Spud, Marco J and Captain Nike finishing it out. Uh, that was your sprint race. I don't know if we will continue with a five minute delay for the main race because quite frankly, they're in Park Ferme already. Uh, but uh, this is my first um, 
first foray. That's another point. We didn't actually get any dampness or rain in the final part of the sprint, as uh, as AJ told us we were supposed to expect. It does look like we might end up with some rain, though, in this race, uh, because things are looking a lot greyer on track and are over more overcast than they were before. We will take a five-minute recess. Uh, so I think we will... You probably will be safe to come back to us at uh, 43 minutes past the hour. Uh, don't leave it too much longer than that because um, last time someone pressed the uh, ready up button too fast. We'll be back with commentary, though, in a couple of minutes' time.
Welcome back, folks. Hopefully you didn't go too far away as we get underway for our Grand Prix. 22 laps of Spa Francorchamps service uh, circuit uh, to uh, to come for you as a rainbow mix of, uh, of tyre choices have been made so far. So hard tyres um, for the odd-numbered drivers in the top five. Uh, medium tyres for the even-numbered drivers in the top six. Then comes Sticky on soft tyres. Look at him then on row four to uh, to, to accelerate uh, down into and certainly out of La Source for the first time. AJ tells us that we are expecting a cycle of rain in the middle of this Grand Prix as well. We've also got soft tyres for Floyd Pink, Chuck Norris, Atsu and Marco. Everybody else, though, outside of the top uh, seven on hards, with the exception of Speedy Spud, who starts in 13th on medium tyres. Captain Nike has gone for hards from the very back of the grid. Strike will be uh, Strike Moist will be ho hoping for a similar getaway to earlier on, but that is going to be a challenge on the hard tyres. The, the advantage of Spa is that we start um, and we go straight into La Source, a very, very short run down into the first corner. However, people do still try to get uh, try to be a hero through there. And uh, we've seen, even on track, Formula One, we've seen some pretty spectacular uh, crashes into Turn One of uh, of La Source. So hold on to uh, your snacks, hold on to your drinks. Well, maybe I would say put your drinks down for lap one of uh, of Spa, and it's 22 laps. We will have, of course, one mandatory pit stop for everybody. At least one change of compound of tyre. Uh, be a different story to the sprint race. It was very static in terms of strategy, but uh, we still have plenty of action to watch. Uh, ARL has gained his 10, 10 of his uh, 16 places he needs so far in this race meet. Uh, six more, and he may well be, our, be another debut winner here for us. Uh, but uh, we shall see as we run through. I think it's his third race of the championship. It's only Ricky Maru's fourth race of the uh, of the server and uh, and. and group of drivers league is the word i'm looking for the international racing league here in season two this is round four of a projected 10 <laughs> jessica saying i need to be gentle on the drivers it's her job to uh, to be the main critic of the race uh, of the uh, of the race series okay i'll leave that to you then jessica no worries <laughs> look out for the rain look out for the mist and uh, give me a shout if you start to see any raindrops and I'm not getting excited about rain uh, as we get ready for the race still trying to find that uh, great camera angle I had earlier on otherwise I just get, keep getting these close-up views of the drivers this is as good as most angles I'm gonna get so looking then to see the final cars arrange themselves has everybody been able to get into their grid 
slots okay? No. ARL will have cold tyres from the start. He's the only one, though, it looks like. There's one Ferrari getting into position of Floyd Pink in ninth at the moment. So, hard tyres on the left of your screen. Medium tyres on the right. Five lights. Rev's building up. It's time to go. It's drop the clutch. It's go, go, go from the start. And there we see um, Moist looking good. Ricky Maru already challenging. Down into the source then for the first time. There's enough room at the apex for Ricky Maru to get through, but he'll be slow on the exit, coming out narrow in that direction. So he has to tuck back up into third position. Moist is away, though. Away like a scolded cat from the line. And he's trying to make hay here on these hard tyres as soon as possible and just hoping that these drivers get in each other's uh, slipstream, challenge each other into the next few corners, and he can start to uh, stretch out his lead. But Adam K is already looking quick as they head up into Lacom then. Any big moves coming? It looks like very clean racing for the majority of the grid there. Out, down, all the way down to 16th. We, we were safely through the first few corners, and Moist leads by four tenths of a second. An almost identical gap then between Adam Kane second and Ricky Maru in third. As we see a change for position, Floyd Pink has dropped down the order. He started in ninth. He's down to 14th position, unfortunately. So an issue for Floyd Pink straight away. Uh, and maybe while they're in this middle sector, we'll go see if he's picked up any damage on the car. In so doing... I can't see any any definite damage on Floyd Pink's car. So it might just have been uh, getting uh, offline and then being passed uh, left, right and centre, which often happens once you lose your momentum at the early stages of the Grand Prix. Let's have a quick look then at uh, pos positions gained and lost through so far. It's as you were for the top seven. And given the mix of strategies, that's quite amazing. Um, but uh, Adam Kay is looking pretty good on these medium tyres, and he's going to be right there. Then three, cl three places climb for Adam Foran. Six for Captain Nike from the back. We got uh, two for Spud, three for Jay, one for Marco, and then the, dr the drivers who have lost positions so far. Of course, naturally, the uh, fastest lap goes to the leader, who was the first to, both, to cross both times the start-finish line. And uh, pit stops for Atsu. And a retirement from Atsu already with Ash K in the pits and going through safely. Here is Alpha Alex getting all crossed up, coming out of Radion. That is why it is there is such a thing as getting too close in uh, Eau Rouge and Radion. So uh, Leon put off there. We've got a full course caution. Full course caution at the moment. A VSC has been awarded. That's why the cars were looking slow through the corners. Now, why on earth did that go down? Because I saw there was a retirement in the pits we have two drivers coming out of the pits and uh, all cars running it seems on track at the moment why we have the virtual safety car um, I'm not quite sure well the, there is an Alpine stopped it's Atsu didn't make it out of the pits on cold tyres and has had a problem through Eau Rouge and Radion and Atsu has retired two drivers down two laps gone and two drivers gone uh, so hopefully the uh, VSC will be released in a moment uh, Chuck Norris on the soft tyres has moved forward looking to 8th position um, Floyd Pink looks to have uh, dropped down the order despite being on soft tyres waiting for the green flag here for the drivers and they're doing uh, their best to stay within the correct delta times ARL hasn't gained any places so far it is green flag racing once again in the middle of lap 2 as coming out of Stavolo are the leaders and looking uh, all at sixes and sevens is Alpha Alex, who's now got uh, ARL right behind him. ARL managed to pounce on Leon and get through. And he's looking for, he's looking left, he's looking right. There is a little bit of lag on the uh, on the view that I've got so far. One of the cars is not performing on the internet quite so well. ARL was doing some pretty funky things there, going left and right on the track on the way into the bus stop. But he's okay. Uh, and looks like things are recovering slightly. He's gained a place then up into fifth position and is in a nice train of cars before we wait for the uh, DRS to be enabled. How's the gap at the front looking for Adam K as he races through? He's looking good here. There is the beep. DRS enabled and racing past like he's driving well. A Red Bull goes the Red Bull of Adam K into the lead of the race in the uh, start of lap three. What's it looking like further back? Well, ARL has <laughs> taken two cars into Lacom and managed to uh, make that one stick as well. So up from sixth up to now third position for ARL.
and he will be very, very interested in a, in a fight for the top two places today if he can try and uh, get on the back of those cars within this lap and pick up the uh, DRS and not give up the DRS to the car behind him, Alpha Alex, uh, as they head out of the bus stop for the first time. But more, most importantly, out of La Source, IRL is still um, slightly teleporting across the circuit. So it looks like it might be either ARL or on, on board with Alpha Alex that I'm seeing the lag, because it's certainly when I'm on board with either of those two drivers. Uh, but uh, Moist is dropping back here from Adam K, as you would expect on the hard tyres. Uh, staying just within the DRS, but the bus stop and Blanchimont are still to come. Uh, three quarters of a second, then the gap at the moment. ARL has not been able to put on more than a second of Alpha Alex, nor has he been able to catch here Stroke Moist. So ARL is going to have his hands full and his mirrors even full up as there is a purple final sector for ARL here on lap four of 22. And uh, remember, there is a big difference between making the right pit stop timing at the Belgian Grand Prix and being one lap too late and uh, just dragging those tyres too long. Moist has got a good option here because he's going from a lower grip to a higher grip uh, race tyre. This is looking good for him. He's able to claw back a lot of the time he lost as uh, Leon, Alpha Alex and all both chase ARL. ARL managed to get a good launch out of La Source. Perhaps using a bit of ERS as well. And has stayed well ahead there of Alpha Alex. Equal tyres between the two of them. And then a group of three drivers with hard tyres. Chuck Norris is in eighth place. Captain Nike for Ferrari fans is in ninth place. Floyd Pink, however, down into 13th place at the moment. Speedy Spud on the recovery after a disastrous qualifying. Uh, and uh, not, not amazing uh, sprint. He is now in 10th place and is picking up a single championship point right now moist has managed to close in and again this is looking like a good high downforce setup in the middle of the circuit for strike moist uh, this will be good when the rain if and when the rain starts to fall around the midpoint of the race potentially but it looks like the drivers might have to live with the tire choice that they're on here comes strike moist trying to get, go around the outside of blanchimont that's adventurous and it didn't quite pay off tucks in for the drs detection um, uh, into the bus stop so that he makes sure he at least gets the DRS detection. But all that time was wasted by the two leaders. That means ARL has managed to bring himself and Alpha Alex into a big, long DRS train now. The strike moist goes wide on the en entry into La Source to get a good slipstream on the way out. Let's see how this one feels on board the Aston Martin. He stayed in seventh gear before as he runs through Radion gets an upshift here and he'll get the DRS and should find his way through ARL is trying to get a double uh, a double batch of slipstream as well and he goes to the outside of Adam K but uh, yields the corner and uh, that was wise wise work there by the Haas driver we've got Alpha Alex ready to pounce in P4 we've got Captain Nike up to 8th position at the expense of Chuck Norris, who himself has passed Speedy Spud. Spud is going down the order. What's happened to Spud? Is that a full-on yellow flag for him? Through Malmody, it's okay. Now we go back to green flag through that sector, that mini sector. Seven tenths of a second then between Moist in the lead and Adam K in second place. Uh, looks like Alpha Alex right on the diffuser of the Haas of ARL in third and fourth positions. Ricky Maru is closing in as well to make this one even more interesting as the hard tyre to medium tyre speed differential starts to minimise now. Uh, you wouldn't want to be on the hard tyres if it does start to rain. That is for sure. That We have the second Haas, though, off the circuit at Pouin. Let's try and find him. There he is. Looks like he's been able to get running again, though, thankfully, so we don't get another uh, loss of uh, driver. Moist is dropping the hammer at the moment, and he's been able to just get ahead of the DRS uh, detection point has he not quite nine tenths ten tenths nine tenths ten tenths it goes through um through the the corner sectors i'll have to just uh, wait and see if the drs opens on adam k's car uh, but he's going to be some distance behind i fancy that alpha alex will have a better run here but now he gets a snap of oversteer coming out of 
uh, Radion and over the hill. Just losing a bit of performance. And you can see there that Adam K did get the slipstream. And he's actually clipping at the end of the straight. Three second penalty for Floyd Pink. Uh, that's unfortunate for him down in 13th position. Got a long way of the race to go. And those soft tyres will be really fading now. Ash K has retired from the race after being off the circuit. In Puana, Captain Nike making this a terrible day for Ferrari. Uh, didn't see quite where he went, but that's a full safety car. The soft runners will be almost certain to pit now. I don't think the uh, the medium tyre window is open for the hard runners just yet. They may have to hold track position here and uh, wait to fit softs or even potentially intermediates in a few laps time, depending on whether the weather actually rolls in or not. Uh, but um, that is Captain Nike out and Ash K on the same lap. Not together, though, I don't think. Uh, Ash K retired in the pits after being off the circuit in Puon, possibly picking up floor damage that is irreparable. But Captain Nike had his own accident, unfortunately. So for Ferrari, that is 13th confirmed DNF and a 12th place plus a penalty right now. So if my old friend Leo shows up, um, he'll be... Super disappointed for the Defosi safety car is uh, is in uh, on the track. Will the drivers decide to pit now? Well, to Drew, ARL uh, stays out on the medium tyres. Brave decision from ARL to hold track position now and bet on either a uh, change later from a safety car, a second safety car that is, or. Uh, potentially waiting to see if the um, if the mediums are going to be needed. I don't know for sure that strike fitting strike moist fitting the mediums will get him to the end of this race. It's a long, long way, double the length he has already done on the hards, of um, obviously 14 to 15 laps, maybe 13 after the safety car has been uh, enacted. I don't know if AJ can give us an update on the chat while he's under the safety car <laughs> conditions. Uh, but how is he feeling about that decision? Because everybody has pitted apart from him. Um, he is the only one out there who elected for the, uh, for the, to turn down the opportunity for a pit stop, unfortunately. It's lap seven of 22. And after nearly everybody has pitted, we'll check in again at those position changes. ARL has had a monster climb, but he's gained a couple of those positions thanks to not pitting. So he's on old medium tires waiting to try and uh, fit hard tyres. The grid has come together. AJ says, let's try something bold. Yep, definitely. It's worth something. But you, you were in net third position before this, <laughs> before this point. So from the back of the grid, from a DSQ in qualifying to net third, you decided to go for broke for, for the win here. How, I wonder if ARL is willing to tell us how those mediums are feeling. Probably not. Uh, but um, they'll be feeling he'll be feeling every bit of the tyre wear on the restart. How much will Moist Adam K Alpha Alex be aware of the tyre situation? I wonder. We've got eight places climbed from J up to seventh. We've got five each for Adam Four and Marco, two for Speedy Spud, and then the losses are Floyd Pink for three, Leon for three, Ricky Maru down two. But Moist and Adam K really are kind of where they started uh, if you don't count the fact that um, they may not have to pit again uh, the mediums are awful so bad <laughs> is what AJ is telling I think he's saying I can tell everyone that well okay <laughs> but do we believe you do we believe you <laughs> that's the question thanks to Jessica for the kind words and uh, cheering on our league of drivers here we're waiting then for the safety car to come in, of course. It won't be this lap, I don't think. No, indeed. So, ARL with uh, quite a lot to do now, as you can see. Everybody else on the, on the uh, race has stopped already. ARL has not stopped. He'll be waiting to try and fit the hard tyres soon. Or there may be a case for having to, to fit wet weather tyres. But it's actually got brighter and drier since we started the Grand Prix. It was misty and overcast when we started. It's now uh, looking like a bright summer's day in, uh, in Belgium, if you can believe such a thing exists. I say that as a Brit with no sense of irony whatsoever. Uh, ARL then 
is uh, in that first position thanks to refusing the entry into the pit lane under the safety car. Going for a bold, bold strategy. I don't know if anyone watching has got other words to describe the strategy, uh, but bold is certainly one. As he's weaving around, not wanting to put too much more tyre wear into those mediums, I don't imagine. And Strike is having to be very, very gentle on his tyres because he wants to get these mediums all the way to a finish. As will Ricky Maru and Leon, uh, Chuck Norris and Floyd Pink will be hoping for that. Floyd Pink can afford to sort of roll the dice a bit, though. Uh, he has a plus three second penalty, but he's now on the very tail of the 12 car grid. Safety car waiting as we run through Malmody now at an absolute snail's pace compared to what these F1 machines can manage. Drivers will be a little bit um, hesitant here, seeing that, uh, that maybe it's possible that ARL's internet is not um, quite where it could be tonight or his connection to the server by way of whatever EA are supplying us. I should be more accurate. Um, they'll be nervous going wheel to wheel with him. So I have to make it a uh, treat him with a wide berth. So that's also a big ask here. The classic position to uh, restart a race at Spa is on the way out of the bus stop when the car behind can do absolutely nothing um, because he's uh, concertinering up and it's single file through there. So is that what we will see? Or will ARL be looking for an opportunity while doing burnouts and uh, snaking the car around to generate tyre temperature? If he sees a gap open, he'll go for it. As we ride on board with third place, Adam K in the Red Bull. Left and right, just to keep those tyres in a good operating window. The hard starting drivers here on the restart will struggle. Adam K and Alpha Alex relative to Moist and Ricky Maru. There's a gap opening up here right now. Uh, is ARL going to plant it here? Will anybody bother to try and overtake ARL straight away, knowing he has to pit again? ARL is the de facto safety car. He's going left, he's going right. He speeds up now on the approach, out of uh, Blanchement, on the approach to the bus stop. That was a good, good manoeuvre. And it looks like, well, Adam K was having to defend there from Ad Alpha Alex. He goes very, very deep into the bus stop as we run through the cars heading through the order. But ARL with a smart restart. Looks like he's got um, Strike Moist right behind him, though. Moist goes for a uh, classic smooth line through last source. He will want to avoid getting too close on the way into this corner. It's a voyage of discovery for the drivers. How much grip have we got going into the most famous corners in Formula One racing? And uh, it looks like we're managing to make our way through safely. Ricky Maru is all the way down there in um, fifth position, but he's got a great opportunity. Strike Moist, though, is right up alongside. ARL defends into Le Con. Moist goes around the outside. There is contact. Moist is off the circuit, albeit on off four wheels. He yields at this point, but potentially. But now that it's, we've got a whole bunch of bunching up going on into Malmedy. Looking for an opportunity all the way around the outside. He leaves the door open to the inside to strike Moist, but he's got additional grip going through there into Jackie X. They're still side by side. And we've got the Alpha, uh, Aston Martin and the Red Bull lining up to pass ARL, who's got poor performance on these old medium tyres but it's ARL holds on to second position at the moment and it's causing a real uh, backlog of cars, a bottleneck of performance. Ricky Maru into third position, masterfully down the inside into Lefania that time and held on round the high line through Puon to make that happen. Ricky Maru is in third position and he's right behind ARL as they come out of Stavolo and they'll take a good long slipstream run through the left-hander before Blanchimont. Blanchimont itself and an opportunity will present itself on the brakes heading into uh, the bus stop. It's looking like a gamble that hasn't paid off at this stage of the race for ARL as he forces Ricky Maru right round the outside. Ricky Maru though, <laughs> oh, beautiful stuff. Side by side through part one of the bus stop and he makes the apex first into and out of the second part. Adam Foran has gained a place on Alpha Alex who on the hard tyres is struggling away here. Now it's Ricky Maru who will take up the charge as they navigate, they negotiate. Who gets to pass ARL next? Well, it was Adam K, but he's lost the uh, slipstream off the back of the the car in front this time Adam Foran is now next one who will try and take on the heart the challenge of passing a stricken Haas car 
But uh, ARL, <laughs> that's a fantastic run through uh, Eau Rouge and Radion. And he's alongside and he's going to try and retake this third position. He takes the inside line, but the Red Bull holds on around the outside. And uh, fantastic driving from these guys. Really well controlled. ARL holds on to third. Does he know? Late on the brakes into Malmadi. Just a slight misjudgment. And Adam Foran doesn't need a second invitation. Sides his way through. And you can see the difference in performance here for ARL. Will this uh, either force an accident or a, or a uh, pit stop from ARL? Is the Well, certainly the hard tyre window is open for him on lap 10 of 22. So he may decide to... Uh, stem his losses the new order then on lap 10 is moist ahead of ricky maru by one and a half seconds adam k uh, behind him on 1.9 seconds away adam foreign and jay have screamed up into fourth and fifth position but will never safely get those soft tires home now the sky has got a little more gray once again and we may be looking at uh, the oncoming some oncoming rain. Adam Foran made the pass around the outside of Blanchemont, but it was an illegal pass. He picked up a penalty for running off circuit at full speed. And so up into third position on soft tyres. Double pain then coming for Adam Foran. A three-second penalty and a pit stop off these soft tyres. But, of course, those soft runners will take the opportunity to gain some time in the, uh, in the damp and wet conditions because the soft tyres are an awesome, uh, awesome tyre in the wet and cold conditions when it's raining. We had a big gap at the front at the moment. The largest it has been this entire race meeting as we watch ARL has not pitted. He's waiting for the rain, I think, to, uh, to make a decision for him here. Jay is close on both of these drivers as they come into Le Fania. And uh, there's a lot of fighting in unconventional parts of the racetrack right now. First comes... Adam Foran in third. Adam K in fourth. Then Jay loses a position to Leon, who sneaks one up the inside into the Stavolo, uh, Stavolo corner. Have I got my corners com completely wrong? I have. It was Lacom and it was Malmody. And now they're going into Puan. That's a crash. That's a crash for Leon. They tried to go wheel to wheel on the entry into Puan. That was a reset to track as well from the McLaren driver. Uh, causing a uh, real issue then for several cars coming through. Thankfully, he was ghosted, but uh, would have caused several code browns in the in the cockpits. Uh, and um, I have to call it when I see it, but there was definitely a reset to track happening as well there to rescue his uh, his race from completely unraveling. Uh, so uh, very close. I don't. I'm not ready to pin any blame between the two drivers there, but certainly Leon has come off a lot worse. Here is Jay then in fifth position, gaining nicely on the Red Bull. Behind them, ARL is uh, learning to manage these mediums now as some of the performance difference starts to scrub off. There was Jay passing the Red Bull before last source. An unusual place to go for it, but uh, he knows that Adam K will be wary that Alpha Alex is in his own DRS zone here. Adam K is super slow off La Source thanks to the hard tyres he's uh, had to switch on to after the restart. Alpha Alex has to try and take to the grass here. Both of them have the uh, DRS. This will come down to what's, uh, what is left in the battery and their setup differences. Adam K and the Red Bull managing to uh, live with less downforce, it seems, perhaps, than the Alpine. But the net result is both of them have lost time to Jay in fourth. Uh, remember, Adam and Jay are on the soft tyres. Adam Foran has a three-second penalty for an illegal overtake around the outside of Blanchimont. Uh, it's lap 12 of 22. That is the first drop or two of rain, I believe. Absolutely. And now it's starting to team it down. Will the soft tyre drivers decide to go in now rather than spend a whole lap on the track? Will anybody decide to get off the hard tyre on these uh, in this situation? What about ARL? It's time to roll the dice, surely, and put on some intermediates, at making the assumption things are going to get worse for you. Or you could, you could consider some softs that'll perform better than your very old medium tyres. Moist leads. Uh, Ricky Maru by 3.9 seconds on lap 12. I'm not expecting a pit stop from them. I don't know how heavy this rain is actually going to turn out to be. Here are the soft drivers. It is uh, 
That was Jay heading into the pits off the soft tyre. Adam Foran, though, has stayed out well, of ARL. He's gone into the pits now. Will he just change for a set of tyres to get him to the, to the end of the race? Or will he roll the dice and fit some intermediate tyres? Certainly, it's not intermediate conditions yet. Jay has put intermediate tyres on. I say certainly, but I do need to remind myself that I don't see half the amount of rain and spray on my view that the drivers see. And it is getting a little bit heavier, certainly in the cockpit view here for Adam Foran. So we will see some big deltas changing across the uh, the racetrack at the moment. There's the hard driver, hard tyre drivers, Alpha Alex and Adam K. They may also be hard drivers. I haven't met them in person, but Alpha Alex into fourth place, Adam K down to fifth. Um, and two of our race winners so far this season do battle for fourth position as things stand. Uh, Floyd Pink has f fitted intermediates. ARL went on to soft tyres, confident in his ability here to manage uh, the wet track phase. But Jay has put on the intermediate tyres and I'll just watch the gaps between Jay and ARL. Can ARL tippy toe around? We've got a safety car. A safety car. Uh, for an accident is that captain nike out no there's no actual retirement there may be some debris on the circuit but we have a safety car strike moist's lead will drop down the hard tire runners will now suffer hugely as the uh, performance drops on the hards is it raining enough for everybody to consider fitting some uh intermediate tyres well coming down in towards the bus stop on board with uh, moist and it looks like it absolutely is time to put the intermediate tyres on there's definitely splashing happening on the circuit moist goes in that's not um, that's not giving away too much because of the, uh, the the delay in the broadcast everybody else coming in now AJ saying that that was a gamble that didn't work for him Alpha Alex is braving it on hard tyres He's going to restart this race on hard tyres. That is hugely, hugely brave. We will see whether ARL can regain some positions now, having pitted just one lap prior and on the, on the soft tyres. Let's ride with him. A lot of drivers in the pits. I think a lot of them will have been served before he gets through, even at uh, safety car Delta. No, into the pits comes ARL himself as well. So he's decided that this race is uh, unrunnable on dry tyres, especially cold dry tyres it's lap 14 of 22 this race neatly split then into three thirds thanks to the two safety cars we've had so far let's um maybe hope for no more a big mix then of tyre strategies to see this race out between the soft and the intermediate the drivers who paid attention to the weather forecast and trusted the weather forecast more likely more, more importantly have gone onto the soft tyres hoping that A, they can switch them on faster than any other hard tire, any other dry tire, and B, it will be a very short spell in which the race is this wet. However, this is looking pretty darn wet right now. It's not as wet as one shot qualifying was, um, but um, at, even at slow speeds, you can see the splashing indicators on the track. You can see the start of some puddles, even some spray coming off the back of Moist's um, rear wing. So this is absolutely fascinating now to see what the drivers will do. Obviously, ARL didn't, didn't fancy running soft tyres again through this one. And uh, a lot to, uh, to, to still write in the story of this particular race. This has been an absolute uh, thrill ride once again here at the International Racing League. There are still reserved spots for this season if you want to join uh, the uh, the. You can um, look up the Discord. And uh, AJ saying he's borrowed a Ferrari engineer or two for this race with their clown wigs as uh, as well. Safety car is on. AJ, he's positive, though. Positive mindset. He's made up positions before. There are still eight laps to go. Probably seven, maybe even six once we get ourselves running once again. As you know, uh, we have to stay under these conditions for a little while. Uh, so there we have a lot of spray coming off the set off the uh, tires now, even at these slow speeds. Uh, Alpha Alex stayed on hard tires. He could potentially run this to the end, but if ARL struggled on old mediums in the dry against freshly pitted drivers, Surely the rest of these drivers are going to struggle. I just saw a Red Bull 
spinning. It was Speedy Spud out of La Source. He may be able to pick up his positions once again. I think he will. Got some more pit stops coming in. More drivers changing their mind. That was Adam Foran in the pits. He's now put on intermediate tyres. Uh, so we only have the four drivers on soft tyres that have pitted under this particular safety car period. We've got Floyd Pink not quite at the back now, but with a three-second penalty, as has Adam Foran. And then we've got up in the order the two Mercedes together in fifth and sixth, looking for good points for the three-pointed start. And waiting then for the safety car to come in and the lights to go out on board. But the more drivers the pit, the longer we will wait for that safety car to come in. Nice to see Smoke uh, in the live chat as well. Good evening to you. Hope your various seasons are going well, Smoke. Give me an update, if you will, um, while we're on the safety car as well. Are you uh, blitzing the field like Moist did in his first season? Or are you finding this season a challenge like Moist is? Moist is in this season. It's a big, uh, big difference. Alpha Alex, then our only previous winner who has led this race of this particular season. Although on hard tyres, I do not fancy his chances uh, on the restart. Especially by the time we get to Lake Comp, I would fully expect several drivers to be passing him fairly easily. Unless it suddenly dries out and the sun comes out, are we going to see those um, those lights go out on the safety car? I wonder. Let's ride with the leader at the moment. How on earth is Alpha Alex feeling in the cockpit, seeing all the tyre choices behind him? Uh, if his engineer has been able to tell him the tyre choices behind him, that is. And uh, knowing the situation he is in. Well, there we go. He knows that now that he's got seven laps to fight and hold on to as many places and points as he possibly can. But this is going to be uh, one of the trickiest challenges uh, this is, this is kind of um, uber-level final boss uh, game scenario to go for it. Smoke says he joined late to his league. He's going up <laughs> against aliens. Try and join an earthbound league like the International Racing League, Smoke, instead. <laughs> uh, but we shall see. Uh, I'm sure it's not as bad as you, uh, as you think it is. But uh, Ricky Maru in third position. He'll rec Smoke will recognise Ricky Maru, I'm sure and possibly even AJ, uh, ARL 33 here. As a hard tyre shod, Alpha Alex has to restart this race in cold, wet conditions. How on earth is this going to go? He's going to take them all the way down to the bus stop, which obviously reduces the, um, the challenge for the drivers, but it also reduces the element of surprise all the way down. Here we go then. Surely it's got to be out of La Source when he's going to have the worst possible run. Um, <laughs> coming out of here, he takes the apex. He goes for the the move. As all he, no, he's even gonna just take his time until he's not uh, grip limited coming through. There's a lot of contact at the back of the order. A straight back onto the accelerator they go. Ricky Maru has launched an, an attack here on. Uh, our season one champion and he tried to take the outside line it wasn't a, a way through as they queue up to go past Ricky Maru is going to try and take the outside line going into La Source and uh, Radion this time surely he's going to have to yield and he does but is that Moist going off Moist just holding it what a save from Moist drifting four wheel drift off the, off the curb over the curb into Radion but he's dropping down the order a big mix of tyre strategies and there is Ricky Maru in the lead of the race on only his third race here in the International Racing League and he'll be absolutely loving this podium on his debut which was awesome awesome performance I may even be doing him in disservice it may be his second race here comes Jaden down the inside as they go three wide into uh, Rivage corner that is crazy crazy times as uh, Alf Alex slips down to fifth position on the hard tyres where is our ex-champion uh Moist is in sixth position on soft tyres. It looks to be favouring those intermediate runners, but will they have to pit again before the end? What about Adam Foran, though? Back up to fourth position, picking those uh, intermediate tyres and moving up the order beautifully. Alpha Alex is down into tenth place, has to pit. Surely has to pit now, because he's not going to take any points away from this one at all uh, very shortly. 
splashing through the puddles on the exit of Stavolo. The, the cars come. Uh, rain lights on, of course. Uh, this is uh, the race where the rain light was uh, first mandated after Schumacher knocked a corner off his car um, on the slowing uh, David Coulthard famously and went hunting him in the pit stop in the pit lane afterwards it is jay in second place looking good but ricky maru is looking amazing at the moment arl is dropping down the order what's happening to arl uh, on the intermediate tires i thought he would be further up but in eighth position at the moment there he goes trying to make a move now on the williams who leaves a space down the inside good racing from marco as arl gets a run on out of last source this time and is trying to uh, get the gap here now and stay with the cars in front. He's got two soft runners in front of him, which he will feel pretty good about at this stage of the race. But will it dry up right before the end? Will we make it to lap 20 before uh, anyone causes another safety car? We might be safe. If they do, there goes Strike making contact. He tagged Adam K. Adam K has spun going through uh, Lake Com, and that one may draw a uh, bit of Stewart's attention. But uh, hard to see what, the, what else these drivers can do in these conditions is, uh, unless they decide not to try and overtake at all. Um, contact is far more inevitable when the grip is reduced as it is at the moment. Here is Adam K in third position. Penalty on... Uh, sorry, here is Adam Foran in third position. Penalty on the car to pay, but looking good at this stage. Has it stopped raining? I think it has. There's, there's no evidence of rain falling onto the cockpit or onto the visors of our drivers. So the intermediate runners will surely now decide that this is the point that... Uh, Unless it's a false dawn, this is the point where they have to uh, to come on into the pits and put on the dry tyres now. Running through, Adam Foran has overtaken. Oh, Jay into Blanchimont. Another little drift there, much smaller than uh, than Moist's drift uh, out of uh, Radion. And Ricky Maru does not go in. He thinks it's still time for the wet tyres as almost double accident happens synchronized drifts from uh, leon and from jay jay trying to avoid catching leon i think or it might have been the other way around it's too much happening uh, for uh, for me to constantly track alfrax is in eighth is he suddenly picking up some pace against these intermediate runners i wonder moist has been able to hold on just after that amazing catch through this very next corner uh, as he went out way past the green uh, the green stuff on the exit curb of Radion. Here comes Adam Foran. Uh, is he on the hunt? Leon trying to make a move on Jay, but it's, there's no way through just yet. Moist could well still be in with a shot of winning this one, despite that massive moment on, on the hill of Radion, because he's on dry tyres, and it appears to have stopped raining, and there you can see the intermediate tyres have absolutely started to give up. It does look like the previous opportunity was the best one to get into the pits for our drivers on intermediate tyres because the overheating has happened already. T they are scrubbing these tyres to death as they bravely go through Puon. Uh, it is definitely affecting Jay more than Adam, uh, more than Leon, who goes around the outside into Lefania. And there you can see already Strike Moist on the soft tyres. Let's ride with him and see how the grip alters and changes between the drivers on the inters. Look at the traction coming out of Stavolo 1. He's ahead before he reaches the apex of Stavolo 2. Surely now all these intermediate drivers, they've seen almost a full lap of no rain. They have to pit now and put on dry tyres for the final four laps of our race. Or they will be completely vulnerable. Alpha Alex has hung on to 8th place. He's 6 seconds away from 7th. Oh, <laughs> just... Just almost losing the front wing of Strike Moist as Adam as Leon makes a late, late call to get into the pits. Ricky Maru perhaps doesn't know quite the full story of the race at this stage. He stayed on those intermediates. He's got a five-second gap to Strike Moist at the start of lap 19. That is going to drop massively as Alpha Alex picks back up into third place. And he was so brave to restart the race on the hard tyres. Now it's looking pretty good for him. Net second, potentially. Strike Moist, though, coming through uh, Eau Rouge and Bradion, hasn't gained on Ricky Maru. So what on earth do I know about anything? Ricky Maru is driving well within his limits here on the intermediate tyres. Maybe it's more important to say the intermediate tyre limits. ARL has put soft tyres on to finish this race out. He's in P7 now. 
has managed to time that one pretty well. He's got DRS on the back of Leon, who was super aggressive just a few laps ago. Is he going for a dive bomb into turn uh, into the late com? He had the corner, and then there is a, a lot of jinking around thanks to the lag. Both cars surviving that one. I wouldn't blame anybody for making contact through there thanks to the, uh, the lag that we've seen. Uh, evident on the car but in the second sector strike moist has half the gap more than half the gap to ricky maru and he will see that that gap dropping down now and where is ricky maru going to emerge will it be fifth sixth or seventh potentially for a pit stop quite a short pit lane and the cars uh, pass the pit lane at relatively slow speed uh, so it's possible that Ricky Maru could still get good points out of this one, but I think a podium might be too much to ask for. Could well have been, have done a lot better there to pit on the previous lap. Here they come, and Ricky Maru is staying on the intermediates. He is gambling this one for <laughs> to take this to the end, I think. I think he's just going to try and hold on to as many places as possible, and that's smart. Look at the gap between Alpha Alex and Stroke Moist. Maybe Ricky Maru can hang on all the way to a finish. And that will be tremendous work. I'm sure the Inters will still have some grip remaining. He's really strong through Roe Rouge and Radion. There must be still a little bit of moisture there. Here we see from the back of uh, Strike Moist, we got the exact opposite that we needed on those camera angles, didn't we? Uh, we, <laughs> we looked from behind as we overtook and went straight to looking forward anyway. Uh, it's not like um, we've been doing F1 racing for very long here with this particular set of game developers. Anyway, Chuck Norris is in ninth and he is four tenths of a second only away from Marcos on much younger soft tyres. This is four, three and two championship points respectively. Looked for an opportunity there. Marco was massively much later on the brakes thanks to the additional uh, tyre performance he's got right now. I think Jessica's probably screaming at me at home that I'm not looking at or talking about Floyd Pink, who uh, was fighting with Adam Kay there. Um, so I will try and, uh, and show you a little bit of Ferrari for your loyal viewership. Alpha Alex has dropped down the order. Apologies to cut away, but it looks like Adam Foran has just retaken uh, a provisional podium position. Ad Alpha Alex might be able to hold on, though, because of that uh, penalty that is yet to pay. I was making the full assumption that Ricky Maru would absolutely pit, but he's got two laps, two and a small amount laps, to uh, to hold off a gap of nine seconds, say nine and a half seconds to fourth place. Uh, as we run through the bus stop, when and we start the penultimate lap now, Adam Foran is the fastest man on the track, quickly deposed by both Jay and then Leon. Uh, Leon on a 144.497 as the track is in the best condition it has been so far. Strike Moist leads by 5.4 seconds. Ricky Maru leads Adam Foran by 7.7 .7 plus 3. Uh, and we will see more penalties as now Leon picks up a three-second penalty as well. And that will really complicate things further down the order. But as things stand, the podium is under threat for Adam Foran uh, from Alpha Alex, who is holding on to these old hard tyres masterfully and he survived a very very tricky prospect remember ricky maru is still on the intermediate tires from the uh, from the second stoppage we had we won't get another safety car now it's too late in the race for the game to code that we won't finish a race under the safety car thankfully but moist leads and he's actually coming up to lap speedy spud who has been anything but speedy tonight, unfortunately, down in 12th position and plus three seconds on the car. So he should then um, end up running just to the end of uh, the next lap. Uh, well, the end of this lap, uh, the next lap for him, he'll be one fewer laps, you would have to imagine. Alpha Alex is in fourth, Adam Foran in third, but Alpha Alex is close enough to Adam Foran. And actually, Adam Foran isn't catching Ricky Maru fast enough i don't think to make the overtake the final lap has begun with the aston martin driver ricky maru will see the penalty flag on adam for he will be tracking the gap to alpha alex and uh, they can all see him now in their sights there is strike moist tipping into the corner with uh, ricky maru just behind him 
I'm completely wrong. Ricky Maru was in front of Adam Foran. So Adam Foran is seven tenths of a second away here. He will be able to pass him, I'm almost certain, going into Lacom, thanks to the intermediate tyres. But they will be <laughs> shredding down and slowly becoming uh, into slicks, those inters. Look at Ricky Maru's uh, top speed there. But the closing speed under braking, Adam Foran will have to try something unusual and a beautiful cutback through the uh, through Malmody into Ravage. And that was expertly handled there. He could have just followed Ricky Maru, but Ricky now will have a really tough job to hold on to this podium. Uh, well, hold on to this second place, I should say. Net second, thanks to the three-second penalty. But Adam Foran, now that he's cleared Ricky Maru at this stage of the um, of the last lap he may well be able to put three seconds easily on Ricky Maru and hang on to second place it's a 12 second delta to our leader at the moment here comes Jay to try and take Ricky Maru now Ricky will try and hold on to this one but surely out of Stavolo too he will not be able to make it looks like the Red Bull of Speedy Spud has been able to, to stay on the lead lap as we roll through and uh, Strike Moist is already in the bus stop he's about to finish the race fastest lap from Speedy Spud there we go he is a Speedy Spud and the winner of the Belgian Grand Prix is Strike Moist a double win today with taking maximum points away from uh, the uh, finishing order I don't think he will pick up the fastest lap at this stage Adam Foran comes through Jay comes through. Oh, Ricky Maru has tumbled all the way down to seventh. That's heartbreaking. Jay in third. Adam Foran does settle in that second position as Alpha Alex, Leon and ARL come through for fourth, fifth and sixth. Uh, as, as Smoke said, good effort for Ricky Maru to pick up seventh place on intermediate tyres. He did really push that very hard. It was a very, very strong one. Adam Kay and Chuck Norris overtake Marco, and then we will see Floyd Pink and Speedy Spud home. But let's uh, give the plaudits and the victory lap to Moist, who, uh, after suffering a tough start to this season, is back on top. Uh, he's uh, making our fourth winner, fourth Grand Prix winner out of four races in this championship. And now we know he has got a real battle on his hands for the champion for this uh, second season, far more so than he did in season one. Fantastic racing from everyone throughout the grid. Really, really hats off to everyone for keeping it together. We had 12 finishes from 16 starters in some torrential qualifying and some very tricky to manage uh, race weather in the middle stint there. Um, Ricky Maru tried to stay on his intermediate tyres, came home seventh, but I'm pretty, much, pretty sure that's where he was going to end up, whether he pitted or didn't. So probably, I mean, you could say, made life difficult for himself to get to end up in the same position. Um, but uh, very bravely run from Ricky Maru. However, your victor tonight on, in both of our races is, of course, season one champion, Strike Moist. There he is. And Jay has picked up driver of the day for Mercedes as well. Although I think our uh, Discord server votes for the official driver of the day over both uh, races. And there is uh, Moist back on the top step where I'm sure he belongs. This is identical twin on the third step, um, or at least identical avatar twin. <laughs> celebrates his third position. Um, nice work then from the Aston Martin team to celebrate. And it's champagne time. Hope you enjoyed that one, folks. Uh, do leave a like and a subscribe on the channel if you can before you depart for us. Uh, and uh, as I say, if, uh, you can always contact this channel if you want to try and uh, race in this championship. Uh, it is Strike Moist picking up not just 25, but eight for the sprint as well. And he moves forward uh, by 33 points. We'll take a commanding lead in our championship. Adam Foran uh, managed second from the race and didn't pick up points in the sprint. We've got Alpha Alex in third place. Good points haul from him today uh, overall. We've got Jay in fourth, Leon in fifth, Ricky Maru in sixth place, uh, as, he, as he was in the sprint as well. Adam K uh, is in seventh, then ARL in eighth, Sticky in ninth, Chuck Norris in 10th. And then outside of that, we have Ash and Marco finished. Uh, so did Floyd Pink. Uh, no, I don't think he did, actually. No. And we had Speedy Spud, Captain Nike and Atsu retire from our race. Well, I think they've um, given us the result for the flipping race. There <laughs> we go. Come on, Webbo, sort your life out. 
Um, those are the problems. Then we have Speedy Spud in 12th. He did pick up the fastest lap. That is confirmed. There was the championship standings after both race meets we were looking at before. I did manage to get you all of the standings at the very end. My apologies. I just need to pay a little bit more attention and stop yabbering quite so much. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for liking the video, sharing it on socials, and so on. We will be back next week for round five of our 10 race championship. But for now, from the International Racing League and from me, Webbo, thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next race day.